Hi and welcome to Lee on the Lectionary and today we're looking at the readings for the week known as Proper 21 in Year A and those readings are Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 1 to 4 and verses 25 to 32 Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 13 and Matthew chapter 21 verses 23 to 32 our readings this week proclaim the liberating and challenging truth that it is not where you start but where you finish that matters to God. Ezekiel's message in our Old Testament reading is that everyone belongs to God. The life of the parent and the life of the child are both mine, says the Lord. People who belong to God have to give an account for their lives to their maker and owner. But some people were saying in Ezekiel's day that God was not fair in his judgments and that children uh, would be punished for the sins of their parents. In other words, as we languish in our Babylonian exile, it is not for our sins but for some previous generation's sins that we are being punished. That's what the people in Ezekiel's day were perhaps saying. Ezekiel puts them straight on these things by reiterating the doctrine of individual responsibility. If a righteous person turns away from righteousness, they will be judged. If a wicked person turns away from wickedness, they will be saved. The privileges of youth and upbringing and opportunity mean nothing if we do not pursue the path of justice and peace. It's not where we start, but where we finish. There is a hint here, however, that even the best of us cannot escape a just sentence. The only way to save our lives is to repent, to turn around, but merely exhorting us to get a life to get a new heart and a new spirit cannot actually accomplish the deed. As our Article 10 in the 39 Articles tells us, Article 10, the condition of man after the fall of Adam is such that he cannot turn and prepare himself by his own natural strength and good works to faith and to calling upon God. We have no power in ourselves to do good works that are pleasant and acceptable to God. God must act to regenerate us and to help us at every step. In Jesus's parable of the eventually obedient and eventually disobedient sons, we again see that to make a good beginning is never enough. Those who would risen to high positions within the religious leadership of God's people at the time of the Gospel reading, stumbled over the authority of Jesus. They did not hear his word and obey it, but they stopped to question and examine it with a view to disobedience. Their shared conversations in verses 25 to 26 were predicated on an unwillingness to embrace the politically difficult Christ. So Jesus points out that not only is starting off well not sufficient, but starting off badly is no impediment to entering the kingdom of God. One can refuse at first, but later repent and do the will of the Father in the parable. The sexual sinners and economic sinners are ready to do just that in the story when they truly meet Jesus in the Gospels. But the once keen hearts of the high religious leaders had grown cold with advancing status, so they were no longer sensitive to the authoritative voice of their master. No, it's not where you start, but where you finish according to Jesus. 
The Lord Jesus himself both started and finished in glory, Paul tells the Philippians in today's epistle reading. Jesus's path from glory to glory, however, was through obedience and suffering, through the emptiness of death itself. What is the therefore in verse 9? Therefore, Philippians 2 verse 9. What is the therefore? Therefore, it tells us that it was precisely because of his obedience that God exalted Jesus. That was the agreement between Father and Son in eternity, a covenant for our redemption. Christ took it upon himself to die for those given to him by the Father, who promised in return to raise and exalt him. Therefore, in the same way, Paul says we are to love those whom the Father has given to us as brothers and sisters in spiritual fellowship. We pursue unity with them and Christ-like love for them, not out of selfish ambition, though there is great reward in obeying the Father, but with fear and trembling. In this, we tread the sacred way that Jesus watered with his own blood, walking to the end, the path of salvation that he has set before us in his strength and for his good pleasure.